Hi everyone, I'm Zach with HKN. Um, today we're going to talk about um, a particular um, type of modulation um, that we would discuss in maybe an uh, analog communications uh, systems class. Um, so, so it has this complicated looking name here. Um, it's called double sideband. Um, suppressed carrier modulation, and um, that does seem like an odd, um, it seems like a complex thing to start with since it's our first um, particular, we talked about modulation in general in a video, but this is the first like particular modulation scheme we're going to talk about. Uh, the reason we start with it is because it is um, the simplest theoretically to deal with, um, and we'll see over the course of um, talking about different modulation schemes why um, why we have to reference or use those, you know, those words to describe it. There's, you know, other sidebands, there's non-suppressed carrier, but okay. So in our video about um, modulation, just in general, we talked about how we can take a, um, a some kind of message, we're going to call um, M of T a, some kind of message, maybe an audio signal, something we want to transmit with a radio wave, okay? Um, so we're going to suppose we have a message, and and this could be its um, say say that this is its Fourier transform. It's not you know it's not important what exactly the message is. It's more how we move it around. So um, also let's just assume this is normalized to height one because it'll make our math just a little bit easier. But um, it could, you know that could be that could be anything. Um, so we talked about when we do modulation, we multiply by a sinusoid, right? And we saw how that would take our message spectrum and kind of move it out along, you know, to some spot in the total spectrum um, at our carrier frequency. So the way we did that, we said, um, so let's, let's come up with a, another signal called S of T. Now this is the signal that our transmitter would actually transmit. What it would do is it would take our, um, it would take our message, M of, M of T. And it's going to go ahead and multiply it by a sinusoid at the um, carrier frequency, right? So, um, and we could do it with some, you know, not, it'll have some amplitude, right? Our carrier will have an amplitude and it's going to be cosine of V2 pi FC, where FC is the frequency we're trying to move it out to, right? Times T. Um, okay, so we saw that we saw in our our modulation video that what this multiplication does in time is actually um, convolve the two values of frequency, and we saw what that does. Now, um, actually, yeah, we could just go ahead and write it down to we'll, we'll write down that. Um, so the, the Fourier transform of the signal that we're sending is going to be equal to the, um, the Fourier transform of our message, right? Um, multiplied by, now the Fourier, tra or no, sorry, it's going to be convolved by um, the Fourier transform of AC cosine. But what this actually ends up being is AC over 2 times delta functions, right, at, at our carrier frequency. Um, so if we graphed that, we'd see the, the message spectrum out somewhere at two points along the frequency axis. Now, um, so now this is what we would just put out into the air out of our transmitter. Um, and what would this look like, actually? Let's try to graph f of, I mean, s of t and s of f. So, so in time, we know we have this message in time. And what did we just do? We, um, we just multiplied it by a, a sinusoid. So, what that look like? Actually, I'm going to have trouble drawing it because I did a really random looking signal here. But let's try to re recreate this somewhat. Uh -huh. Okay. 
and we multiply by a really a high frequency cosine. So what this actually ends up looking like is it's going to almost have like a mirror. And we would see, because what we just did is we turned this into the amplitude of a sinusoid. So we'd see our, our high frequency sinusoid all in here like this. Okay. Well, well, I'll just finish it for effect. I get what's going on. There's a there's a high frequency sinusoid of like varying amplitude. Um, and well, let's kind of draw maybe not quite to scale what it would look like in frequency. We know we know roughly from our modulation video what it would look like in frequency. We'd have our zero point and then out here at FC and negative FC. We'd have our spectrums, kind of copies of our spectrum. And these would have, OK, so um, I guess we'll just keep track of the scaling factor, too. Remember, this originally had height 1. Um, we, so these would now have height AC over 2. OK? Um, that's not exactly important here. Um, we're more trying to see what happens from side to side in the frequency domains. OK. so. So now we have this, and we send this out into the air. And um, OK, so here's the problem we start running into practically, is that this multiplication here is not exactly simple to do. There's no, remember we're dealing with like analog systems, right? There's no real convenient analog circuits that just multiply voltages together or whatever. So this is a little bit difficult. We can accomplish this part of it with something called a ring modulator. Um, I'm not going to get into it right now, but you could look up a schematic of it. You can find it on Google pretty easily. Um, so that's how we would div um, we would come up with this message. Now we have to. Now the issue is to um, we have a receiver too, right? So this is out in the air. We got to receive it, and then we got to turn it back into something. Ideally, that looks almost exactly like this. That's the whole point. We're trying to transmit a message and get it back somewhere. So we have to demodulate this. Um, and OK, so we'll go through the math of how we would demodulate it. Um, we could say that, let's call it y of t. Our demodulated signal is going to be equal to, we talked in the modulation video, how we can just multiply this again by the same frequency. And we saw how it moves part of it back to the middle. Um, and we can low pass filter it. So we're going we're gonna to take s of t. And we're just going to multiply it again by the same, the same cosine. Actually, let me see if we, uh, OK. So we're going to multiply it almost by the same cosine, except um, just not have this. We're going to uh, have it have unit amplitude, right? So we're going to do s of t times cosine of 2 pi, yeah, 2 pi fc again. But remember what s of t is. Now, this is equal to. Um, m of t times this cosine. Times this cosine again, right? So we can just say it's that times cosine squared. Um, and now we have a little. Uh, um, uh, identity we can do to expand cosine squared. We can say this is equal to, let's see, m of t times, let's be, right, that'll be ac, whoops, ac over 2 times 1 plus cosine of twice the frequency, right? 2 pi. 2fc times t. OK. Um, so I mean, that's just from you know doing here to there is just an algebra trick we know, really. But um, that's actually what it also does in frequency. So um, what this would look like once we demodulate this, 
Well, r let's write out the uh, frequency expression of it too. This would be so y of f would equal um, m of f, right? Well, OK, yeah, let's get right into it. We would get, I'm going to skip a couple algebra steps here, but we would get AC over 4 times M, um, our message spectrum, shifted out to 2FC, plus our another scaled version of our message shifted out to um, well, we're shifting it out to positive and negative 2FC, OK? F minus 2FC. And then finally, we would have one more version of our, ooh, hang on. Um, I messed that up right there. This is supposed to be M of F minus 2FC, OK? And then finally, we have a version of our message recentered at 0 be plus AC, and it will have AC over 2 for its amplitude, M of F. Right, so this is, um, let's, yeah, let's actually draw it down here. We'll draw, let's note actually, this is S of F. This is our the spectrum of our sent thing. And Y of F, the spectrum of our demodulated thing. We'll draw it down here. Now, uh, now we have this, our original spectrum centered at 0, height AC over 2. And we have versions of our message shifted out, way out along the axis to negative 2 FC. And they're half as, they have half as much power, 2 FC. And OK, so I guess I'm not really saying maybe something that's obvious here. We don't care about these ones, right? Um, all we wanted to do was get our original message. So uh, in the final step of our receiver, um, it would just low pass filter and basically just take um, you know, some kind of unit height low pass filter and just pull that center out. So that's really that's the process of modulating and demodulating with this type of scheme, but the problem is, OK, so the problem we run into practically is we have to do all this with circuits right, in the time domain. And so given that we've received this, um, I believe that we can't, the, the ring modulator isn't also a demodulator, and it doesn't translate that easily. So we, uh, I mean, there's ways to do it. But the problem is, is that um, if we, say we can detect peaks here. So we're detecting the peaks. That's great. We get, the, we get our message. We're detecting the message fine. And then we get to this point where we cross the zero point. Um, whatever circuitry we have would have to, de have to decide whether to go up or down. Clearly, going down is the correct decision if we look at our original signal. But um, we have to be able to make the correct decision there. Um, and that turns out to be practically difficult. So next time, we'll talk about something, um, a, a solution to that. Um, where we say, let's imagine that we just move our entire message, our original message, above zero, right? And then we never have that problem of it crossing zero. Um, so we move our original message above zero and then modulate that. And then we can just detect the, the peaks of these, and, and it's pretty easy. Um, and that's what we think, uh, that's what we call AM, that's amplitude modulation. Um, and so we'll discuss that in the next video. All right, thanks.